Welcome to the Unity Workbench. This is Chris. In this video, I'll walk you through the basics of working with the new Shader Graph in Unity. Shader Graph is Unity's new visually oriented design tool for creating materials and other visual effects. I do have to start with a warning that Shader Graph is designated as a preview feature from Unity, meaning they advise not using it in production level projects due to potential stability issues. And after working with Shader Graph for the past few weeks, I can attest that it does still have some bugs, some of which you'll see in this video. But it represents such a powerful new design tool that it doesn't hurt to start getting familiar with it now. Our objective in this video will be to create this animated material you see on the tank. It could represent a shield or some other sort of power up in a game. If you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, download the Unity package that I've provided in the description below and import it into a brand new project like you see here. When the import window appears, go ahead and make sure everything's checked and import it. Now go to the new folder that's been created in the project browser and go into Scenes and open the sample scene I've provided. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the grid since our floor already has a grid texture on it and also hide the gizmo icons. In order to use Shader Graph, we have to import it into our project. You'll do that from the Package Manager, which is found under the Window menu. At the time of this recording, Shader Graph only works with the new Lightweight Render Pipeline. Unity plans to make Shader Graph compatible with more rendering pipelines over time, but for now you'll have to use the Lightweight Render Pipeline. So we'll import that first. Once that's done, we can import the Shader Graph itself. You'll notice that some errors have occurred in our console. This is an indication that the import didn't quite go the way we planned. This is one of those bugs that I mentioned we'd find. If the installation had completed properly, when I opened the Create menu in the project browser, I should see a section called Rendering, but I don't see that. Luckily, the fix for this is easy. We just need to restart Unity. OK, so we've restarted Unity. We no longer have any errors in our console. And when I open the Create menu, I can see a rendering section. So now I can choose to create a lightweight pipeline asset. We'll just use the default name. Now I'll open the Project Settings Graphics and drag in our pipeline asset. And you'll notice that all of our materials have turned pink, but there are no errors in our console. It turns out that pink is Unity's way of telling us that something went wrong. Unfortunately, they don't provide more detail than that. But if we look at our material, we can get a hint. It's still set to use the standard shader, which isn't compatible with lightweight render pipeline. Luckily, Unity provides an easy way for us to remedy this. We'll go to the Edit menu, Render Pipeline, and choose to upgrade project materials to lightweight materials. And there we go, everything's restored. Now we can move on to creating our first shader graph. Right click to create a new asset and choose shader and PBR graph. We'll call it tank SG for shader graph. And then we need to create a material to assign it to. We'll call that tank. And under the shader dropdown, you'll see a section called graphs, and that's where our tank shader graph is. Now we just need to assign this new material to all of the pieces of our tank. We'll replace the current tank color material with our new material. Here you can see the change. Now 
There, that should do it. Now to start editing our graph, we just double click on the shader graph. This is the shader graph editor. This main node you see represents the final output of our shader. This area provides a preview, which can be set to different geometries, including a custom mesh of our own. So we'll choose the tank turret as our mesh. This panel will list all of our properties that we want to expose for other developers to use. I can change the main color of our material by clicking on this input. But color is probably one of those things I want to make available to other developers. So I'll add a new property. You'll see we have different value types we can choose from. I'm going to choose color. We'll call it base color. I'll give it a nice drab green. And then we drag the name base color into our graph. And we connect its output pin to the albedo input pin of our material. And there we go. Now we have an externalized parameter that can be used to change our color. The real power of Shader Graph comes from all the nodes you can use to design your materials. The nodes menu provides many different materials in different categories. You can also use the search field. I'm going to search for the Fresnel effect. The output of a Fresnel node is going to be a value between 0 and 1, where 0 indicates that the surface of your mesh is pointed directly at the viewer, and a value of 1 indicates that the surface is pointed perpendicular to the user. If we connect the output of our Fresnel node to the emissive color of our material, you get a rim lighting effect, which will be great in helping us achieve the glow that we want. But I don't want this to be a white glow, I want the glow to have a color. So let's add another property, and we'll call it Glow Color. Set it to a bright yellow. And then we'll drag that into our graph. To apply this color to the Fresnel output, we simply multiply the two outputs together. We can see the result in the preview, and then we can connect that to our emissive color. There, now we have a yellow glow. To make it a little less uniform and a little bit more like rim lighting, I'm going to increase the power parameter to 2. There, that looks much better. A quick tip, in Shader Graph you can use your middle mouse button to move the whole canvas. So we'll give ourselves a little more room. Next, I want to make this material look like it has a stripe pattern. For that, we can use a procedural node called a checkerboard. With the checkerboard, we can change how many subdivisions there are. We'll set the X divisions to zero to get the striped effect we want. Now we'll again multiply this times the output of another node. And now we have the striped effect we want. But you'll notice if we look at the turret, the stripes aren't translating quite the way we want. That's because the UV mapping on this particular model isn't very good, but we can work around that with Shader Graph. You'll see here that by default, many nodes use the UV mapping of the model as one of their inputs. But we don't have to use the model's UV map necessarily. I'm going to create a new node, and I'll go under Input, Geometry, and select Position. The position returns a value that represents a position in space. By default, that position will be in world space. 
So we'll connect that output to our UV input of our checkerboard. And now you'll see the stripes look the way we want to. Let's save this graph and take a look at it in our scene. So it looks good. Let's rotate it to make sure it's behaving the way we want it to. Yep, all the stripes look great. But notice when I translate it through space, because I'm using world position, the stripes are actually locked to the world instead of the object. Let's change that. In our position node, we simply have to choose object from the space menu. Now if we preview in our scene, you'll see it behaves exactly like we want. One handy feature of Shader Graph is if there's a preview that isn't useful to you, you can collapse it to make more space. So we'll collapse a few of these nodes. Now we'll add our final feature, which is animating this striped texture. Animations occur over time, so let's start by creating a time node. I want other developers to be able to control the speed of this animation, so I'll create a new property using the vector1 type, which is the type you'll use for any single number. We'll call it anim speed and set its default to 0.2. And we'll take the time output from the time node and multiply it by our anim speed. and we'll take that result and add it to the position. Now we plug this into our UV input, and we get a nice animation. And here's our final output. It looks great. And you'll see if we select the material, we see all of those properties that we exposed, and we can change those. So perhaps our game would change the glow color as the shield starts to deplete. So that's Shader Graph. Hopefully you can see how Shader Graph provides a much more intuitive and efficient way to design shaders than having to write shader code by hand. So that wraps up this episode of the Unity Workbench. If you have specific ideas of things you'd like to see created in Shader Graph in future videos, let me know in the comments. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until next time, this has been Chris.